Hello, welcome. My name's Kirsten Hunter. I'm a clinical psychologist and I'm wanting to share what we cover in my private practice with you. Today I'm going to talk about femininity and masculinity and the big question of where do you sit with connecting with your femininity and masculinity and why is it important. It's a really, it's an area that I find quite fascinating and um, has um, quite significant impact for people day to day in, in very broad areas. But let's get into it. So basically, um, men do not own masculinity and women do not own femininity. So individuals have a need both. It's all about the balance. It's about flying. Cliche, I'm sorry, but it's about flying with two wings, not one wing. And let's talk about it. So uh, masculinity is really connected with a sense of of drive, strength, competitiveness, building, those sorts of areas. Femininity is very much about connectedness. It's about being quite other orientated, very nurturing, those sorts of areas. And basically, we need to have both to balance. If we are too uh, competitive and driven, we really become very disconnected from other people, um, very isolated, and uh, I guess our ethical reasoning can become questionable. If we become um, too um, too nurturing and connected with others to the point where we don't advocate adequately for ourselves, then um, obviously we can uh, really not do enough self-care and we cannot be uh, goal-directed enough to get where we need to go um, in building our lives. So masculinity and femininity are both very, very important. And it's a really interesting question to say, where do you sit with that? I know when I was growing up, um, I was very, very tapped into my femininity. And I would argue that to a degree, the masculine side was um, an area that I really discovered as I got older. And I really got clearer in my own mind and um, became far more... Um, goal directed get out there make it happen and don't apologize for that so it's a beautiful balance uh, it's, it's fascinating if we think about teenagers because teenagers are a stage of self-identity where they're really fundamentally saying who am I and uh, do I like myself and how do I relate to other people how do I be my own person um, but also feel that connectedness with other people and gender is fascinating not gender actually I, I apologize for that uh, they are exploring their gender and that's very important um, but their masculinity and femininity within that so um, it's really interesting you see groups of teenage girls and groups of teenage boys so the groups of teenage boys will get together and they're very much focused on how they are at doing different tasks they compare notes with their skills in doing this interest and that interest and they really relate to also how funny they can be and um, those sorts of areas so there's a lot of competitiveness and there's a lot of mastery with typically with um, groups of boys so they're tapping into that masculinity side of things and perhaps they don't really tap into their femininity um, unless they they're already developed in that way which is great um, until maybe they start to have girlfriends or they start to have boyfriends and they start to get into that sort of nurturing kind of side of things side of life um, girls, if you if you see groups of girls together, they're really saying, "Am I part of the group?" And they can um, they do a lot of disclosure, a lot of sharing. This is me. This is happening for my life. And if you will uh, be interested in me, that that makes me feel that I'm important. And um, unfortunately, that can lead to them really talking a lot about dramas. Um, you know, this is drama going on in my life. Drama going on in your life. And can get a bit messy with them identifying with the dramas when the truth is they're just wanting to um, feel that level of awareness of each other's lives and that connection. So they're tapping into their femininity often. Um, of course, there's enormous exceptions to the, the typical rule. So, yeah, so the question is, where are you with your masculinity and femininity? And if you find yourself to be leaning one way and you don't have the advantages of the other, be aware of it. And think to yourself, okay, where does that come from? What was the culture I grew up with? What was the family tradition? Um, the subculture even. And what areas, how can I tap further into that? 
Um, I really notice that this is, I mean, there's a million examples, but um, uh, dads, for example, who have been workaholics and they go to work and they say, okay, I am giving to my family because I am bringing home the, the money. Cliche, but true, common. Then uh, relationship break up because they've actually been um, disconnected, sadly, and then they end up being primary carers for when they've got their children. And so then they start to get involved in the nurturing side of things more. They start to tap into the more feminine role of connectedness with what's happening with their children at school and um, or just the nurturing side of things, which is really actually lovely. And a lot of people tell me that um, when they're in that situation that they've just become a far better parent. So that's an example of someone who's been very masculine who's then tapping into their femininity. And I have a lot of women who are quite ineffectual in their own personal development because they're just so busy being 24-7 nurturers. And, um, you know, they haven't stopped to think, well, you know, how am I travelling? What are my ambitions? What do I want? What's my personal growth? So that then on their deathbed they can say, I have lived my life um, fully and really expressed who I am. So it really is about balance. And it's a really interesting conversation that we all need to have. So I'm talking about this because I'm um, not available yet, but I've, I've got these series of books, um, Signposts for Living, and I cover 153 clinical areas, plus, 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 and this is one of them. So I'm just starting the conversation. I'm just realising that you can get psychology into the world, and that's really exciting. So uh, if you want to catch my website, kirstenhunter.com, Actually, that's not true. KirstenHunterAuthor.com, the other one's my clinical site. Uh, Facebook is Kirsten Hunter Author. The Instagram handle is Kirsten Hunter Author. I'm on Twitter at Kirsten Hunter Hey You, and YouTube, Psych in Your Car, and podcasts, Signposts for a Living by Dr. Kirsten Hunter. So I'll see you next time. Bye.